kudos to the cameraman for nailing that one. <laughs> it was a fantastic last time. We're probably close to uh, BOG when it comes to the uh, Charlie <laughs> commentary team. Uh, LZ continuing on his merry way. On to 26 now. Hasn't necessarily got the runs he would have wanted over his uh, time in B grade, but this is an opportunity to finish off this job with a 50. A full toss and he misses out. There's fielders square of the wicket both on the off and on side, which means you have to either hit behind square or in front of square to get runs. The only thing that sort of comes to mind which I didn't like so much, just watch this one, is that they've tried their seamers and it didn't quite work, and we will lean towards say a medium pace or a spinner. They've gone more pace, it doesn't necessarily add up to me. I would have thought, they've got to change things up, they've got to hit 9 somehow. For me it starts with, a, with something different. Yes, uh, well if you're going to bowl pace, you have to mix up the field a bit. Different lines, different lamps, different strategies, different fields. You uh, certainly can't do what this seems to be, which is just holding the line. Having everyone saving one in the covers. In fact, there's only one fielder that's not saving one in the covers, and that's Gully. So it's a very conservative template field. One of the features as well for this bay, and this is why I don't think necessarily trying to build this ring is necessarily going to work, is that they have had a knack of finding gaps. It's been one of the features of, uh, of this run chase. So. They're going to back themselves in the batsman to be okay and find those gaps anyway. And there seems to be a little bit more room as well with those. So we've played 21. The Demons are 1 for 68. So there has been a change of the bowling at the Nillenbeck end. They have brought on a medium pacer. It's slightly different. I wouldn't mind him to use, say, your off cutters and your leg cutters where, where need be. To sort of still be that that genuine change rather than just be up and down. But uh, no no radical changes to the field. In fact, the gully is now a short third man, so there is everyone saving one. Of course, I mean, this is local cricket after all. There have been teams who have thrown away a number of wickets when they can't pierce the covers and they just get frustrated and they slog and they go out. So, I mean, it's not the stupidest strategy in the world, it's just a very boring and conservative one. Oh dear. It's pretty much the worst line you can bowl with this sort of field. And they could think about a third, but no, there's a shorter boundary there. Both straight and behind the keeper. So only a couple there. So well sticking along nicely, he moves on to nine.
tidy first up over, the Demons are 1 for 70. This is the 23rd over. Right it continues there from the Elizabeth Street end. Mm, very classy glance. Just one. It's actually been the first out and out single for a while. We had a single there in the 12th over and a one by in the 13th. Everyone else has just been even in threes. I lost that one, the cameraman. Give him a wrap and look what he does. <laughs> yes. But uh, nicely played from Wells. Used the pace of the ball there, and this is one of the things I fear this getting on another seamer is that when you've got two batsmen who've got their eyes in, you give them some, enough pace, not too much pace, they can simply use it there to work themselves around in those gaps. So we've played 23, Diamond Creek are 1 for 75. It's the 24th over. Diamond Creek are going a little bit above 3 runs per over. So Fice into his second over here. The late inclusion, as we know, we only had 10 to work with at the start of the day. What an unusual bowling action. His front foot is very wide on the crease, which means it's a very open um, front on bowling action and so all his weight is actually being moved away from where he's bowling. And uh, the way he pounds into the pitch as he jumps into his action means that a lot of his strength and weight is not actually being delivered through his arms. Maybe that's why the ball is coming out so slowly. As long as it doesn't get injured, it seems to be okay though. <laughs> Just to do a side by side comparison to how uh, McLeod were travelling at this very same point in the game, they were 3 for 74, Diamond Creek 1 for 75. Wow. Right, right on comparison, just a uh, with two fewer wickets lost. Of course, thinking back to earlier, that came pretty handy because McLeod could have used a couple more men to come in. <laughs> yes. Done by Bosser behind the stumps there. Hmm. Well done.
Much need made in there for the roost. For the demons, it's still one for 75. With uh, Fest at the other end, it sort of brings up a point about the depth of the two clubs there. With, with Diamond Creek having so many senior teams, it means, especially for this first weekend, more likely to have a, a very competitive second 11. McLeod don't seem to quite have that same depth. And we know they've only got the four senior teams there, so more likely to have to bring guys not quite up to to be grandstanding to play in his first fixtures. Um, how important is depth, especially this time of year? Oh, absolutely. This is the most difficult period because a lot of your best players are going to be young people, particularly uh, university students, and university ends at the end of October. So you need... And so often the most important exams and, uh, and assignments are due early November, late October. So they often will have to take off, uh, not play, these first few rounds to get their, uh, their schoolwork done. And then they're available in November. So you often find you don't have enough players to field 11s. Uh, not to mention the fact that, uh, obviously, uh, school holidays are off, so uh, you've got your high schoolers who uh, have to only can only train after they get back from school. Those are the most difficult issues. Um, one other thing as well, as we watch this one go out to point for a couple, is that Diamond Creek starts having become premiers last year, they're not bringing in necessarily players who aren't up to scratch. They're bringing in guys who have had success, main runs, taken wickets, guys like Watson, McDonald, these sort of guys. It just shows that how important the depth is, the fact that they've been able to measure up today, haven't been uh, out of their depth, and have certainly played their part. Also, the fact that school holidays are only just now coming to an end. And it's... Uh, it's not unheard of to take long holidays and actually miss the first week back at high school because you want to take a longer vacation than normal. After 26, or 25 should I say, it's 1 for 78. It is the 26th over 15 to go. So 90 balls left, 89 now, with uh, how many runs is it? Uh, We've got 40 to go to win this fixture. So. Just looking at about that two and a half and over, maybe towards 2.7. So. Now, of course, for those of you who are following the B grade bandwagon around, McLeod have another away fixture. They're travelling to uh, Greensboro to take on Montmorency, while Diamond Creek will go to Riverside for the arch rivalry there at Watmore Park. What could be better than that? I think you're staying here, if I know right, Chaka, for the um, third fixture next week. Oh, oh sure. absolutely. Yes, we've got Rosanna here at the commentary level next week, so could very well be here, but we're not real sure yet. Yes, you do have a lot of obligations. Um, I know that the JLT Cup Finals are happening right now, with the final on Wednesday. So you might be uh, elsewhere in the country. I think I will, but I've uh, made sure I've reserved the uh, Australia Day Clash for you. <laughs> to make sure I'm available in for Yes, very good, very good. So I've played 26 in this run chase, it's 1 for 78. So this is the 27th over and finally something from left field has come up. 
it is a change of the bowling to bring on some sort of spinner to try to mix it around but no attacking fielders Ooh. So, off spinner bowling at the Elizabeth Street end everyone is saving one except we have a oh he's coming into a slip position now and there are two back on the leg side for the slog shot Mm, nice. Very high arm. He's sure to get plenty of uh, top spin with that action. Nice. Well, the usual period where batsmen would lazily go out because they think that their team is comfortable. Bit unlucky there, but... Yes. So, so, the usual thing is if a batsman goes out, but the run chase is very comfortable, and they might just lazily think, oh, I don't need to worry because my, my teammates down the order will do it. Well, that period is already gone, and now we enter into a different period of the game where they might see someone sort of reckless trying to finish the game early by playing a few dazzling shots. And a spinner is the perfect foil to that. It's nicely dabbed from Wells, working its way to short third man. One of the things that stands out over a competition like here in B grade in the DVCA as opposed to say JLT is that they're better off scoring the run slower but with less wickets down for their percentage. So it means they don't Probably won't take too many unnecessary risks at this point. So just three singles off it. The Demons at 1 for 81. This is the 28th over. Oh dear. <laughs> That's much like our offer buys moment. No doubt go its well into the hot. Just when you've got maybe a smidgen of pressure, you haven't had a boundary in about four overs and then what? <laughs> the the buys might be the deciding factor in this game. So reaching that point. They've conceded maybe 10 buys. And uh, PSA, uh, Daylight Savings, tonight, uh, 2am, so uh, you lose an hour sleep. But if you're still awake, you don't really lose that sleep, do you? <laughs> but maybe ten years ago we could have done that. <laughs> yes. Ooh. <laughs> that was nearly four more buys. So let's have a look at this field. On the off side, there are four fielders saving one. On the leg side, there are four fielders saving one. So it's just a very, very ring conservative field, saving one everywhere. But with the keeper up, you can't dab and run. You just have to stroke it through the, cut, the gaps. Of less calibre, you'd probably find yourself caught out in this field, but I think just the way that Wells and Nilsen are going, it's maybe a little bit too good at the moment for this sort of field. I think to have a gap somewhere, maybe play something they're not comfortable with. Maybe if it's mid on, so no mid on for the sake of getting him to play across the line or just something a little bit different. Oh, 
off of it, the demons, a 1 for 86. So this is the 29th over, the second for the off spinner at the Elizabeth Street end. Hopefully work from Elzig, moves himself onto 31 now. Been a very good batting performance by him, very, very calm, mature and professional. That's exactly what you want from your skipper. Two fielders are at long on and uh, deep mid wicket. Wells moves on to 18 with that uh, pull. Thump. But uh, the, f the fielder at deep mid wicket is staring right into the sun. You wouldn't want to have way, would you? <laughs> Might be time to look at. This is this is really bad. When you've, they just don't have these sorts of runs to play with. They can't just concede one, two, three, four singles per over. They have to get zero and one runs per over. Maybe it's time to have mid on, up catching, see if you can get a wicket that way. Although your bowler needs to back you up if you're going to have no deep back at square. It will get there. One thing you need to do when you're when you're at his pace, and it's pretty similar to Badurk's pace, maybe you touch slower, but you can't be short, otherwise it's just easy pickings there. Perhaps in the lower grades your captain would give you a deep backward square, but not B grade. A really big over for Diamond Creek. They've worked themselves to 93 for one. So this is the 30th over. Still only one wicket down. Bring back Rodder. Still every single fielder is saving one. No catching forward or behind the wicket. Top glance there. It's exactly what you want from your league glance is to make sure you understand the field you're against. I'll find gaps accordingly, I'll pick up three. Twenty-two away from uh, from victory here, making amends of their the last time they met, which McLeod got the uh, the win last season. This is uh, turning from a rather tight contest to a very, very one-sided one. And uh, this period of uh, going, taking the score from 50 for 1 to 100 for 1 is really where the match has been won. And of course this is a 50 run stand, which is a testament to the way that this top order has gone. At times last year they didn't seem to quite have that now to get through it and get those big partnerships but today they've gotten the job done it's been a remarkable piece of professional batsmanship from both these two the number of bad shots dumb shots is so few oh. <laughs> mm. Donald Creek well on top at 1 for 97